Father in heaven, we love you tonight, and we're so grateful that we can come and exalt you, the King of glory. I pray for um, each one who is in, the, in, in this class and the various uh, uh, ministries that are taking place across the building tonight. Uh, we pray, God, that you'll just touch each uh, classroom and each of our teachers and those involved in ministry this evening, from the youngest to the oldest. I pray, God, that you'll just move in a mighty way. Lord, we have some in our, our fellowship who have been sick in body, and we just pray that your healing virtue and power will just be manifested in their life. We pray especially for Miss Alice tonight and ask you to touch her and strengthen her and minister to her and just be with her. Lord, tonight as we open your word, uh, as we tune our ear to hear the voice of God, I pray, God, that you will uh, just strengthen us, encourage us, minister to us uh, as we receive your word tonight, as we grow in the knowledge of understanding and hearing your voice. And Lord, if we're going to effectively uh, move and flow in the Spirit and, and do what you've called us to do, we're going to have to have a keen ear to the voice of God. And so, Lord, we're learning uh, to have uh, a more sensitive ear and a sensitive place of the Spirit uh, so that you can just move in and through us because we want to be used of you. And we give you praise and glory and honor for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, amen and Amen. So we're going to be looking at John chapter 10. That's kind of where we're taking the basis of our study from is John chapter 10. But we'll have a, a lot of scripture we'll look at uh, as we move along. So in the first part of the series that we started, we talked about many voices. And you've heard me say this week in and week out. I have usually kind of start with this. That we are in a culture, we're living in a world, all of us are living in this place where... I, there are so our ear is bedding for so many ears or so many voices. We have to learn to now, now be careful what I'm about to say here. But sometimes you have to learn to tune some of those out, right? Uh, but you want to tune out the right voices, and you want to tune into the uh, tune out the wrong voices and and tune out the wrong voices. And so uh, the voice we want to tune into is the voice of God. In the first part, part one of our lesson on uh, hearing the voice of God. We talk about several dynamics and, and uh, what those different voices are that sometimes can lead us astray if we're not careful. And that is, one is the voice of man. Uh, the voice of man can be good, uh, yet it can be negative if we're not careful. So we have to be careful and guard our heart and guard our ear to hear the right voice when it comes to man's voice. Uh, I touched on this a little bit in the very front end of our lesson, uh, of our study, and that is that that uh, not every voice that stands behind the pulpit, the pulpit is necessarily the voice of God in our culture and in the days we're living in. So how do we discern that? How do we know that? How do we figure that out? How do we understand that? Well, it's pretty simple. It needs to align with this word. And if it doesn't align with this word, this is, this is the basis by which we determine every voice that comes our way. Does it align with the word of God? And if you and I will use that as our barometer, if we'll use that as our, our guide, then we'll always be on course. Can you say amen? amen. If, we get, if we get out and want to... Uh, now, I read a lot of books. Anybody else, your readers in here? I read a lot of books. Uh, I like to read books. If I can get a sermon out of it in the first 10 minutes, it's a good one. Uh, but, but I read a lot of different books from time to time. And, and some of them speak to me some of them don't speak to me. I'm also one of those individuals that I can read something and, and for lack of a better term, I can, uh, I can eat the fish and spit out the bones. Uh, so I can take the meat and spit out the bones. And so there's some good things, that, but I want to make sure the things I'm letting speak to my spirit and, and get into my spirit are things that align with the Word of God. Uh, sometimes I can read something from someone or, or hear something from someone and one part of it has true alignment with the Word of God, and then there's something I read that may not. But it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to throw the whole thing out. I just take the meat, spit out the bones. I take what's good and what I can use and what speaks to my spirit, what aligns with the Spirit of God, and uh, that's what I utilize in, as, as part of, of direction for my life and, and for ministry. And so we need to be careful. There's a lot of voices, and the voice of man is one of them. And, and sometimes the voice of man can just uh, uh, bide for your time and get you off course. It doesn't have to necessarily be something uh, horrible. It doesn't necessarily have to be something bad. Uh, 
But there's a lot of things that can distract us from hearing the voice of God and doing what the Lord wants us and desires for us to do. So we just have to have, have a keen ear about that and a good sensibility about that when it comes to the Word of God. The next thing we talked about, and this one's pretty evident, we don't want to listen to this voice, right? And that's the voice of Satan. How many know Satan can speak to us? And I don't mean necessarily in an audible voice, uh, but, but Satan speaks to us in a lot of ways. Uh, it's deceptive. In fact, the scripture tells us he parades himself as what? An angel of light. And so one of the things that we discover about how the enemy talks to us is there's always a flare, a piece of truth in what the enemy wants to bring. And so, how, again, it's that question we have to ask ourselves, and that is how do we discern when what is truth and what isn't? Does it completely align with the Word of God? Uh, and, and we find doctrines that are out there today, uh, some that align in part with the Word of God, but they don't align with the fullness of the Word of God. And so we have to guard ourselves against the enemy who wants to uh, lead us. And, and John 10 and 10, I use this scripture, I think, on Sunday, comes to what? The enemy comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't care by what means he does that for us, right? He doesn't really care if it's uh, he doesn't care if it's uh, uh, by leading us astray or or uh, some temptation or some situation in our life. However, he can get us off of the course. I mean, oh, this is our this is the map, and so if he can get us off course in any way, then ultimately what happens is he's we've tuned our ear there. And we've got in the wrong place. So that's the other dynamic. And I'm moving through these quickly because we've covered these. And I'm, I want to get into where we're at. So the, the next one is the voice of self. Anybody ever talk to yourself? I always say it's all right to talk to yourself. Just don't listen to yourself. <laughs> but, but sometimes we can convince ourselves of something uh, bad, negative. Um, how many ever had a situation? Let's use it from a physical standpoint. Have you ever had a physical standpoint and, and you worked yourself up to the place it was something serious because you kept hearing yourself saying, oh, this is bad. Oh, this is going to be bad. I'm going to have to go to the doctor and I know this is going to be bad news. Anybody ever done that? Why do we do that? Because that's where the enemy wants us to live. What does the Word say about that? We just give it to the Lord. What does the Word say about if you're sick, any among you sick, what should we do in that case? Well, if any among you sick, let them do what? Call for the elders of the church. Call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint them with oil. Pray the prayer of faith. And then what will happen? They'll be healed. And, and so we have to learn and come to the place where we're just living off of that premise. Amen? We're just living off of that design. We're living off of that desire. And so we just live in that place and go, okay, that's where we're going to live. We're just going to come to that place and believe uh, believe that the Lord's going to help us. And when we get to the prerequisites, there's some application to that side of it that we're going to move to. So we just have to be careful in listening to our own voice. Amen. Sometimes the most, sometimes the most dangerous voice is not the voice of Satan. Amen. Sometimes it's not the voice of, of, of man. It's your own voice. Amen. Everybody say it's going to be all right. Sometimes you just got to tell yourself, hey, it's going to be all right. Sometimes you just got to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and say, okay, you know, I'm just kind of a country boy, so you know, you know my terminologies by now. Sometimes you just, got to, you, you just got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and say, hey, we're going to get through this. We're going to make it. We're, everything's going to be all right. Anybody ever woke up, you didn't feel good? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Most of us said this morning. <laughs> and so sometimes we just get up and say, you know what? It's, you, you know the terminology I use, right? We can either say, good morning, Lord, or what? Good Lord, it's morning. And, and so we just have to come to the place where we're saying, good morning, Lord. And we begin to speak. You know, one of the greatest things you can do is just begin to open your time with the word, open it with prayer. Even if it's a little piece of scripture, open it, read a little word, get a little word in your life, get a little prayer time in your life, get your day moving right, and then you get it on the right track, and you get moving in the right track. So at that point, you begin to listen to the right voices at that moment. So we have to guard ourselves not only not to listen to the wrong voices of man, we have to guard ourselves not to listen to the voice of Satan and he does he does get in our ear. 
And, and the reason Satan gets in our ears is because he wants to get in our head. And oftentimes, if he can get in our head, what happens? He can convince you. Oh, he can convince us. And then he gets in our heart. He gets in the deep, it gets something that gets deep rooted. But as Miss Jeannie just said, when he, when he gets in our head, then all of a sudden we begin to con So now we're not listening. So Satan's done his part. Now what happens? Who we start listening to now? Because if he gets in our head, we start listening to ourselves. But Satan put that seed there, right? And so then we, we're just in this domino effect. So what is the voice that we need to be able to listen to and to hear? Well, it's the voice of God. All other voices are secondary to the voice of God. Now, the scripture says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by what? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we understand how does God speak to us most frequently? Through his word. Through his word. God speaks to us most frequently through his word. Oftentimes I have people come to me from time to time and they say, well, pastor, you know, I'm just struggling. I'm not hearing anything from God. I'm not, you know, God's not speaking to me. God doesn't want to say anything to me. You know what my first question is? Are you reading the word? Because <laughs> if you're not reading the word, you're probably not going to hear much from God. Now, I believe the Lord can speak. To, if God so chooses, how many believe God could speak to you in an audible voice? Absolutely. I don't know that I've ever heard the audible voice of God. Now, I've heard the strong impressioning voice of God that I knew it was in my spirit. But I, I don't know that I've ever been to the place where I've heard, heard God say, Ray. I need to talk to you for a moment. <laughs> I don't know I've ever heard that. But but I do know he can speak in an audible form if he chooses. Uh, he, can, he can use other people to speak into your life if he so chooses. He can use a prophetic word if he chooses. I mean, we believe in the gifts of the Spirit, amen, mm -hmm. all of them. And so he can use a word of knowledge. He can use a word of wisdom. He can use tongues and interpretation of tongues to speak to you or the entire congregation if that's what he chooses to do. However, I will say this so we have an understanding that the most frequent way that God speaks to his people is through his word. And so if you are desiring for God to speak to you, then you have to get into his word on a regular basis and let him begin to speak to you and, and begin to understand how to study the word and get in the word because that's how God's going to speak to you most frequently. Now, there are going to be times, I don't know if you've ever done this before. I've been in those places before where you, uh, how many ever done this before? You're like, God, I just need a word. And, and you just go. That'll get you in trouble. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it, it's all of a sudden, it's, it, you know, you've turned right to the begets. And you're going, that says nothing to me right now. And so what do you do? We blindly open it back up and, you know, this is my, well, that might work. Uh, the best thing to do is learn to use your Bible. Learn to use your concordance. You're struggling in some area of your life. You're dealing with something. Figure out how to use what you, the tools that God has given us to be able to look up and find scriptures that can be applicable to those places of our life. If you're struggling with depression, there's scripture on depression. If you're struggling with, with sickness and need healing, there's scriptures on healing. If you're struggling with addiction, there's scriptures that... All of, there's all those places in there. And so you can find that and read those places of the word and let the Lord speak to you in that dynamic. Amen? And so that's how God most frequently uh, speaks to us if we'll just uh, tune, get our ear tuned to what he has to say. So let's look at a couple of pieces of scripture here. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them. Now, what happens is, we have to ask ourselves the question is, how does, he, how does he lead them? And when he brings them out to his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they what? Know his voice. For they know his voice. So how, so we're, we're likened as sheep here following the shepherd, who is Jesus, but how do the sheep follow the shepherd? Because they know his voice. They're able to hear his voice, and they're able to discern his voice. And if we can do that, then we can effectively walk with the Lord and have a keen ear to hear. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger. 
So the, so if we know the voice of the Lord and we're walking and we have a keen ear to the place of understanding and know his voice, then that's the voice we need to follow. Amen? Amen. And the scripture says if you know that voice and you're, uh, you're tuned into that place and tuned into that voice, the scripture says you will what? By no means follow a what? Stranger. A stranger. So then you're not going to get wrapped up by following the voice of man. You're not going to get wrapped up by following the voice of Satan. You're not going to get wrapped up even following the voice of self. Because the voice that is leading and guiding you is the voice of God. And all of those other voices become strange voices to you. So if you become so uniquely tuned in to the voice of God, then every other voice will seem to be strange in the place of direction in our life. Does that make sense to us? And so yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of the stranger. And so if you ever, I, I use this terminology and, and, and that is, anybody ever had, you just kind of had a, a, a questioning in your spirit or something, you had a, you go, a check, that would be a better term. Most of us know that term. You ever had a check in your spirit about something? What voice is that? Lord. That's the voice of God. But, but, but how did you get that check? He knew the word. Because you knew the word. And you were familiar with the voice of God. You were familiar with the word. And so the reason that check came is because you were familiar with the voice of God. But what you were hearing was what? It was a stranger. It was a stranger. Now, we teach our children, right? Um, what, what, are the, what do the kids call it? Stranger danger, stranger danger, you know? Well, the same principle holds true in our walk with God. Stranger is represents danger. And so when we have that check in our spirit, we need to pay attention to it. Sometimes a check in our spirit is just to slow down. How many know it's okay to slow down? Just slow down and listen to the voice of God. Slow down and listen to what is... So when we get our check in our spirit, how do, we, how do we eliminate or how do we discern that what is right and what is wrong? Be still and listen to the Lord. Be still and know. He says, be still and know that I am God. Be still. Just, just be still. When you get a check in your spirit, Connie and I, we don't so much now, but used to when before Connie started having so many back issues, we jogged early in the mornings together. And um, uh, one morning, one particular morning, we was jogging, and uh, all of a sudden, I smelled something strange. And then I saw something strange coming across the road. It was black with a white stripe down it. <laughs> and so I told Connie, I said, stop, stop, stop. And so we watch this skunk cross the road. We need to be so keen. Now that may be a ridiculous illustration, but we need to be so keen when those strange things come our way that we go, wait a minute, stop. Now we could have done one of two things in that situation, right? We could have kept running and got sprayed. We could, <laughs> you're exactly right, Sister Howard. We could have kept running and ended up getting sprayed, right? Or we, we just stopped. We just completely stopped. We could have said, well, this thing is just interrupting my morning jog, so I'm just going to keep on going. <laughs> Sometimes we do that in the spirit, right? right? This would just interrupt my timing. This would just interrupt what I'm wanting to do, so I'm just going to keep on charging forward. No, when we get that check, we need to stop. Because why? That's the voice of God saying, slow down, listen, pay attention here. So we need to learn to... to uh, understand those places and those dynamics because he's keeping us safe. I'll give you another silly illustration or, or, or a funny, you can laugh at it if you want it. Connie wasn't laughing too much at this one. I was out hunting one time. Skunk story again. I was out hunting. I had a little bird dog I'd been training and I was out hunting and boy, this little bird dog came down on just a solid point. I mean, you know, so uh, if you know anything about bird dogs, so what you do is you train them to, they pick up scent of pheasant and quail, what you're hunting, and when those birds are sitting tight, they'll point. And so you know to go in and flush so you can shoot the birds and, and uh, they get really tasty when you put them on the grill. And so um, so this little 
bird dog, this little puppy I had, boy, she came down on this solid point. And I thought, man, she looks so good. So I'm going to walk in on in front of her, and I'm going to flush. I'm going to flush this bird. Uh-oh. Well, I walked just in front of her, got in front of her nose, and I looked over to flush the bird, and the bird was black with a white stripe down its back. And I turned and took off running, and I was hollering at her, and she finally came with me, and I thought, well, we avoided all disasters. And so we kept on hunting and went on, and we finally made it back to the house, and I opened the front door and I said, you'll never guess what happened. <laughs> I said, we were out hunting and Brittany pointed this, this skunk and we almost got, I thought, no, I said, I thought we were going to get sprayed. She said, you thought right. <laughs> she said, we smelled so bad. Dog smelled, I smelled like a skunk. Here's, I use that illustration because here's why I use that illustration. I've used it often. We stayed out long enough that that smell became familiar to us. Right. So that we, I didn't even recognize that I smelled like a skunk. Now I know you're looking at me and going, that is impossible. That's what happens with sin. Mm-hmm. Is sometimes, if, if we stay in a place of sin, we stay in that environment, we can get in those environments and stay so long that we don't even recognize it. Mm-hmm. Everyone else could point it out to you. Right? Connie said, <laughs> you think you got sprayed? I said, yeah. I said, I don't really smell. Do not come in this house. <laughs> Why? Because she didn't want that odor permeating. Right. Mm-hmm. So here's what happens for people a lot of times. So they start listening to the wrong ear. I mean, to the wrong voice. Biting into their ear. Then they stay in those environments and continue to listen to it to the point that now they're not hearing the voice of God, but now they can't even recognize the voice. They don't even realize they've been sprayed by the skunk. Now, everybody understands that illustration, right? But that's how those things work, and that's how those things are produced uh, in our life. Verse 8, Psalms uh, 85 and 8 says, I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people and to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. So when once we've heard the voice of God, once we are able to discern and begin to walk in that, we don't need to turn back into those places. Using my illustration with getting sprayed by the skunk, well, that would have been crazy if I thought, I didn't really, you know, I could have looked at Connie and said, you know what, I didn't really get sprayed, but I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll go out there and get sprayed and show you. But that's how some people live their lives, right? I'm not living the world. You, you're you saying I'm living. I'll show you how I can live for the world. Right. <laughs> right, that's somewhere else. Somebody, what, far, far away. But that's how things That's how things uh, flow in people's lives sometimes. Then in John chapter 16 and verse 13, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into what? All truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. God is only going, when it, listening and hearing God's voice, understand that he is only going to speak his truth to us. Everything that the word of God has to say speaks to truth. Can you say amen? There's, no, there's nothing false. There's nothing going to contradict itself. Right, the Holy Spirit is not going to, the Holy Spirit is not going to uh, contradict God the Father. The Son is not going to contradict the Holy Spirit. They are in a place of harmony and unity. So when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, then it's going to what? It's going to align with the Word. And when the Word of God speaks to you, it is going to align with the Holy Spirit. And when you read and read the words of Jesus, they do they still make red letter Bibles? If you read the words of red, the words of red are not going to contradict what God the Father is saying. And the words of red are not going to contradict what the Holy Spirit is saying. Why? Because they're in a place of unity and harmony. And so when God the Father, through the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit is speaking into our lives by His Word, there is never going to be any contradiction. So having said that, when we, when we talk about the voice of man or even our own voice, we need to be speaking in the affirmative place 
of what the Word of God has to say. Because our speech needs to align with the Word. Our speech needs to align with the Word. And so, whether we're speaking into our own lives, how many believe you can speak into your own life? I've been at those places before and said, okay, Ray, you just need to straighten up. Right? Sometimes, uh, so, you ever scold yourself? You just, need to, you just need to line up. I was telling the story, I think it was last Sunday or Sunday before last, you know, I was a little frustrated. And, and uh, you know, I, this may have, been, it may have been last Wednesday night when we were talking about some of these things. And, and Connie said, uh, let's just pray. And I said, well, you just pray if you want to. <laughs> she said, well, I'm going to pray for you. Well, you just go right in and pray for me. <laughs> I don't know why she asked because she's going to pray for me whether I said yes or no anyway. So, but, but the reality is that, that sometimes we just, we just have to check out of where we're at and get checked into where God is. And, and by the way, your pastor does that sometimes too. And so we just have to go, okay, wait a minute. That's, that can't be God. How do I know that's not God? I know that's not God because it doesn't align with his word. I know that's not God because that's not the direction the Lord would be leading me in. Anybody ever wanted to uh, share the love of Jesus with someone? <clears throat> and you know what I mean by that. I'm not, that's a, that's a, a facetious term. I, I'm, I'm going to give you the love of Jesus here in just a minute. I mean, you've ever felt like that? None of y'all, I can tell you. Y'all are all more sanctified than I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you the love of Jesus here. In a minute. I'm going to share the love of Jesus with you here in a minute. Well, that's con that's, that contradicts the word, right? That, that goes against what God's word says. So th that can't be God speaking to me to do that. So who's speaking to you to do that? Ray or the enemy planted that seed in my head and I went ahead Right? Miss Jeannie was talking this a while ago. Planted that seed in my head and I went ahead and listened, bought the seed, planted the seed. Right? He brings this point of deception. I, I listened to it. So I bought the seed. And then what do you do when you buy the seed? You put the seed in the ground. And then if you're not careful, if you don't get in the Word of God and the truth of the Word, then what happens? That seed takes up root. And then once it takes up root, it will eventually manifest itself. That's the reason we got to come into that place in, in, in place of uh, check and all those, all those places of dynamics in our life. All right, any questions about that or any comments uh, you'd like to add in on, on some of those things about uh, uh, maybe the voice of God or, or how the enemy sometimes can deceive us? Any, any comments along those lines before we go to the next place? All right. So let's move into the next area. This is where we're going to be. We, cut, we, we touched on a couple of these early on, <clears throat> but this is going to lead us into the purpose plan of God. So I know some, I've had people say, well, there's not any prerequisites for hearing the voice of God. Oh, yes, there is. There are, in fact, prerequisites for hearing the voice of God. Um, we just read it a few moments ago, right? The sheep know his voice. Mm -hmm. He didn't say the goats know him vo his voice says the sheep know his voice. And so if, if a person is not saved, if they've never experienced salvation, they've never invited Jesus to come into their life, outside of the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, they are not going to have conversation with God. I've had people tell me before, say, well, I pray. Well, I'm glad you pray, but until you pray a sinner's prayer, you're not going to have conversation with God. Well, I've told God a thing or two. Well, you probably have. But you haven't yet listened to what God has to say to you. And what God has said, he said what? Repent. And as soon as you repent, wait, do we still use that term anymore? Repent. And as soon as you repent and ask Jesus to forgive you, you come into a relationship. What happens in relationships? I tell, uh, I tell uh, people oftentimes, particularly young married couples and premarital counseling, that, that communication is to marriage what blood is to life. Mm -hmm. Communication in marriage is what blood is to life. So let's, let's make that applicable in the place of our relationship with the Lord. If communication is to marriage what blood is to life, so communication with the Father, with God the Father, is what blood is to life for us. Mm 
So if we don't have communication, if we're not having conversation with God, then we don't have relationship with God. Let me say it again. If we're not having conversation with God, then we're not having relationship with God. Because he desires, listen, when God created Adam and Eve, why did God even create Adam and Eve? He didn't create Adam and Eve because he needed someone to take care of the garden. He did not create Adam and Eve because he needed someone to, to, to uh, uh, take care of the animals. Why did he create, create Adam and Eve? Fellowship. fellowship. Relationship. We use the term fellowship because we see that. That's King James, right? But if you look at it, in from, if you begin to look at that in, from, from the place of, of the Hebrew language, he's talking about relationship. He created man so that he might have relationship. And he created woman for man so that they might have relationship. So let's understand that God is all about relationships. Mm -hmm. And in relationships, the lifeblood of any healthy relationship is what? Communication. Communication. Conversation. By the way, conversations go in two directions. <laughs> right? That's the reason God gave you two ears and one mouth. Because we ought to listen twice as much as we speak. And so, conversation. God created man for, conversa for, for relationship. So that he, and, and in that relationship, he desires conversation. So how do I come into a relationship with Jesus Christ? Salvation. Through his blood. 1 John 1 and 9 says what? You ought to know this. You've heard me quote it enough. If I confess my sin, then he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Right? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so all we have to do is invite Jesus to come into our heart and into our life. And we are saved. We can receive salvation. Now, it is not enough just to simply say that we are saved. Now, once we are saved, once we have invited Jesus into our life, then we need to cultivate. How I many know what it means to cultivate something? We need to turn up the ground. We need to cultivate relationship, and we need to cultivate conversation. Well, Pastor, how do I have conversation with someone I cannot see? How do we have conversation with God? Exactly. Sister Howard, if you didn't hear her, she said, just like we have conversation with one another, we just speak to him, and we expect him to speak to us, right? And again, most That's frequently, what say again? That's Letting him speak to us. Yeah, a lot of times we do a, all the we do all the conversing in our relationship with the Lord. Sometimes, but sometimes he just wants to. Sometimes he just wants us to listen. Um, I tell folks a lot of times when you're when you go to prayer, when you go into prayer, and you anybody ever been to a place of prayer? And, and really needed God to speak to you? Anybody ever been that? You've just gone to prayer and you needed God to speak to you. Can I ask you a question? When you went to prayer, did you take your word with you? Because if you're wanting God to speak to you in a place of prayer, then you need to take your word with you. If you, if you believe what I said a few moments ago, because we just learned early on here, right, how does God speak to us most frequently? So I'm going to go... now. Is there anyone in here you have this entire word memorized? I know Sister Howard does, but anybody else? And Miss Jeannie probably does. But No, it, there's none of us in this room uh, that, that had the entire word of God memorized. We have some scripture memorized, and we have you know some passages maybe memorized, but, but we don't have the entire word of God. So if God most frequently speaks to us through his word, so when we go to a place of prayer wanting God to speak to us, why would we leave the most critical piece of conversation in the other room. So you just take it to you in prayer. I cannot tell you the number of times that I've just been in prayer, just took my word with me, right? May have been in a prayer meeting. I, I do it when I go to a prayer meeting, right? Even on Sunday mornings, you know, we're praying at 9.45 on Sunday mornings. I've got a word handy, right? It's right there, close. Because God, I may sense the Lord wanting to speak to me, and so if I'm not hearing him speak to me in any other way, I just go to the Word and open it up and see if there is something there he's wanting to say to me. And oftentimes, I cannot tell you how many times I've opened that Word and God began to speak to me. 
or God just began to speak to me about something and because I'm familiar enough with his word, I began to go to passages that reflected that place of conversation. And then the Lord begins to speak to me in that place of conversation. That's a reason you need to learn and hide this word in your heart. Because when the Lord begins to speak to you in a place of prayer, maybe you're praying about something specific, and now God begins to speak to you, then you can open the word and say, okay, here's this passage of scripture, or I need to go to this passage of scripture. Or maybe God begins to speak to you and you just go, this Bible doesn't have one. This is what I call my preaching Bible. I don't mark in it. and, and I, The reason I can is because I can easily be distracted. Uh, I'm always, so my preaching Bibles, I don't mark in the ones I take to the pulpit. <clears throat> Because what happens if I got a mark and I look over and I see something marked, it's got to be good enough to say again. And so, so I usually keep my distractions limited. But this Bible doesn't have a concordance in the back of it. But a lot of your Bibles will have a concordance in the back of it. And so God begins to speak to you. Maybe you don't know exactly where to go, but go to that concordance in the back. And so maybe God's all of a sudden you just hear the Lord saying peace. So well, I start need, I need to see what God's having to say about peace. So I can just go to the back in this concordance in the back of most of our Bibles we have a concordance and I just look at the word peace and then I start looking at those scriptures of peace and you know what happens? Then I start reading scriptures about peace and God's speaking to me. Does that make sense? And that's how the Lord can speak to us. And so when you come into a relationship, when you get saved and salvation is a prerequisite for hearing and having conversation with the Lord, you come to that place, then God wants to speak to you and he wants to speak to you through his word. And those are the ways he can speak to you through his word. Years ago, when I first, uh, shortly after I came here, I did a uh, study on how to study the Bible. Probably need to do that study again. But I had a, a number of simple tools that can help you. You know, Strong's Concordance and, and, and the Study Bible and, and some different, you know, a Bible dictionary and some tools you can have. Uh, most of those things you can find online anymore. But... But when God's speaking to you, begin to go. And, and look, you do not have to be a Bible scholar to have an understanding of this word. You just have to know him. Because why? Watch this. In the beginning was what? And the word was with God. And the word, and the word became flesh. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh. So when I'm reading this word, I'm having conversation with the Lord. When I'm reading this word, God's speaking. His flesh speaking to me. So, well, I've never, God's never spoke. I've never seen God in the flesh. Really? I've never, God's never spoke to me in, just like in a fleshly way. Really? So in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh. So this word is God in the flesh. And this is how God speaks to us through his word. And he wants to have conversation with us and he wants to, <clears throat> pardon me, he wants us to be in a place of relationship so that he can do this. So the first prerequisite, if you're going to effectively have conversation with God and you're going to effectively walk in that place of the spirit and you're going to effectively hear the voice of God, then you've got to be saved. That's the first step. And if you're saved, then guess what? You're a candidate to be able to hear the voice of God. You just got to learn to, to cultivate that and foster that in your life. Uh, when your children are growing up, um, most of our, in this room, most of our, all of our children are all grown. So, but, but we have grandchildren or we have, have uh, uh, little ones around from time to time. And, and how many know they don't always listen real well? Oh. And it probably, it, honestly, it doesn't get any better by the time they get to be teenagers. <laughs> In fact, it might get worse. <laughs> Maybe they listen better as a kid. But, but understand that we have to just keep getting their attention sometimes. Amen? And so, so let's not be at that place where the Lord just has to keep getting our attention. Let us be attentive, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let us be attentive to what he is having and wanting to say to us. Here's a scripture in John, uh, John 10 and 3. To him the doorkeeper opens, and again, the sheep what? They hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by What does that say to us? He knows you personally. He has relationship. You have a relationship with you. Now, anybody know any strangers? No, you don't really know them. You have some people who are acquaintances. 
But the scripture says here, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name. He has relationship with them. He knows them. He knows you. you you're not going to call somebody by name that you do not know. And so the scripture here tells us that he knows us. He calls us by name. And when he does that, he does what? He leads us. He leads us. So understand in the conversation, hearing the voice of God, in the conversation we are having with God, he has purpose, and we'll get into this when we talk about more in the purpose of hearing the voice of God. God's purpose for speaking to us is for what? To lead us. The reason, the purpose behind God speaking to us is so that he can lead us. And, and how many know that the enemy also has a purpose for speaking to us? And you know what his purpose is? To lead you. But to lead you astray. And so God's purpose is to lead you. The enemy's purpose is to lead you astray. And so to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name. He knows them. And he leads them out. So he's leading them out of something, right? And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. We shared this scripture a while ago. Why do they follow him? So as a believer, this, this, as a person in a place of salvation, when I'm walking out and I'm hearing two voices, I know which one to follow. If the enemy's, if the enemy's trying to lead me astray, I know that that's not the direction to go. I mean, sometimes we come to a Y in the road. We come to a cross in the road, a Y in the road somewhere along the way, and we have to make a decision what path we're going to be on. Are we going to be led astray by the enemy or are we going to be led by the voice of God? And so the key is learn early, learn early in your walk with God and learn early in your relationship with the Lord that I'm going to hear his voice, I'm going to understand his voice, I'm going to know his voice, and then I'm going to follow him. I think I used this scripture a while ago, but we'll use it again. But you do not believe because you are not, as I said to you. And so, He's already spoken. He says, you're not believing. You're not in this place of walking with me because why? You don't know me. And then John 9, 31. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. Oh, wait a minute. What pastor said a few moments ago wasn't just man's voice. It's God's voice that says the sinner, right? God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he what? So if, if you're living a life of sin and you've not confessed your sin and come into a relationship with the Lord, God's not hearing because he doesn't hear sinners. He hears that, that prayer of repentance, but he's not having conversation with the sinner. Why? Because darkness and light do not coexist together. Amen? So now he knows that God does not hear sinners. Uh, excuse me. Now we know, not he knows. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. Now you don't have to approach that with arrogance. When someone who is lost, who's a sinner, says, well, I talk to God. I have conversation with God. You know, you don't have to flaunt this scripture and say, one-sided. no, you don't. Scripture says you don't, you don't have to do that. It's a one-sided conversation. Yeah, it is. It's a one-sided conversation. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God, that also tells us something about our relationship, doesn't it? It goes into deeper than just a casual relationship. When it moves into this place right here, and it says what? If anyone is a what? Right? If they're a worshiper of God and does his will, so it's, it, I mean, know oh, this is taking us a step beyond our commitment, our fresh relationship, our place of repentance, this is taking us a step further from our place of repentance into that relationship. Worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. So that tells us that once we come to a place of repentance, when we come, once we come into a relationship, then we've got to grow deeper into this place of relationship with the Lord and become a true worshiper of God and do what he is saying to do his will. How many has ever wondered what God's will was? So we've got to do his will. How do I know what God's will is for my life? Why do I keep coming back to this Bible? Because this is our map. This is our, this is our atlas. 
I did a series of teaching one time called The Road Atlas to Life, and it was all about how we follow the Bible. And so, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. And so, if we're worshiping God and we are uh, doing his will, we're following his word, then guess what? He hears us and we can hear him. Uh, John 8 and 47, he who is of God, he hears us and we hear him. He who, is a, he, he who is of God hears God's words. We hear his words. Notice, notice this. It's not singular. Plural. So he's not just saying a word to us. He's speaking to us in a place of conversation. Therefore you do not hear. Why? Wait a minute. If you're not of God, you're not going to hear God. So he who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. So if we're not hearing word, if we're not hearing words from God, if we're not hearing God's word, what happens? We have to question, do we really know him? Right? Say, wait a minute, I hadn't heard the audible voice of God. That's not what I said. If you're not hearing God's words. So if you're not spending time in the word, do you really have a relationship with him? If you're not spending time in fellowship with him. So that's that dynamic that we, <clears throat> excuse me, we need to grow in and continue to walk in and uh, follow the Lord's will. All right. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Because everyone who hears the truth does what? Hears my voice. So here was Pilate questioning Jesus, right? He said, are you, really, are, are you really a king? Not a king as you suppose, right? Jesus answered, you say rightly that I'm a king. He was saying that, not a king as you suppose. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. And everyone who is of that truth, this truth he's talking about that he's bearing witness to, hears my voice. So as a believer, as a Christ follower, we need to understand that we can hear the voice of God. Amen? And not only can we hear the voice of God, we should hear the voice of God. So we can hear the voice of God, and we should uh, hear the voice of God. All right. That's a good place for us to wind down because we're never going to cover receptivity. Uh, and uh, so, how many, uh, so if you've already been in the class, you also know that I'm covering some other dynamics that I didn't cover in the first part in this class. So, uh, so let's pray. And uh, let's pray that the Lord helps us throughout the week to hear his voice. Yes, amen. We need to pray for Alice as we did earlier in, in, in our time when we opened, just that the Lord will touch her and bring healing to her. So let's just pray and we'll close out our time together and look forward to what God has for us on Sunday. Father in heaven, I love you and I thank you. I thank you so much for your word that is powerful. Um, Lord, I'm so, I count it such a privilege that you would want to have conversation with us. We should count it this huge privilege that you would want to have conversation with us. And Lord, you truly do. Your word consistently and accurately tells us that you desire to have fellowship and conversation with us in this place of relationship. So I pray, God, that you will help us today and uh, in the days forthcoming to let our spirit, let our ear be tuned to the Spirit of God and that we would we would learn to hear the voice of God and accept what the voice of God is saying to us as His truth and grow in that place in you. And so Father, we just thank you and we praise you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to continue to do in our hearts and our lives. Lord, continue to pray. We, we, we just lift up those who need a supernatural touch, a divine healing, physically, spiritually, emotionally, whatever it may be, God. We just lift up those who need a powerful touch from you that you might minister to them and that they might grow in you. And Lord, we pray for our services on Sunday for a mighty and powerful outpouring in you and our equipping classes and in our time of prayer.
our time of worship, and uh, Lord, through the preaching of the word, our altar time, Lord, every dynamic of our service on Sunday, we're just praying that you and the fresh anointing of God would be in our midst. Lord, we're careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it. In Jesus' mighty, glorious, and wonderful name, and everybody in the room said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord.